In this study, we're looking at The Muffin Song. Quite an unusual title. It's by Sean Bircham. Watch the YouTube video with him and the duet he does with the other lady. It's really, really awesome. And he's got some very cool passing notes in between as well, using arpeggios and scales. But let's first of all look at the basics. We're going to look at a nice thumb technique, thumb tapping in the background there, you can see it. And uh, we're going to do something like this. Nice bar chords. A to A minor. So while we were playing, I hope you realized that my wrist of my picking hand wasn't really moving. It was basically all inside the fingers. We kept the wrist over here as stationary as possible. Now for the chords. The goals for this video, nice bar chords, G sharp 7s, C sharp 7s, F sharp 7s, which all ties in with the circle of fifths, believe it or not. Get your teacher to explain it to you, or drop me a WhatsApp if you really want to know more about the circle of fifths. It's quite good fun. A to A minor, which is from your harmonic minor. And let's go through those chords. Okay, E, we know E. Now, on the tab sheet, on the PDF file, I also got E like this. But I decided that, actually, for this song, I would rather do the open E, because it allows itself this walking bass from the root note, which is the sixth string for the E. And then onto the fifth string. So while playing E, your count and picking technique with your thumb is one and two and three and four and you can see the thumb alternating between strings six and five. The root note or bass note for E being the sixth string. Now with the rest of the hand, you'll notice my fingers are first fingers on the third string, middle fingers on the second, ring fingers on the first and they're working as one. So a bit of a different angle there. Thumb picks a note and then those three pick those three strings, these three fingers, pick these three strings simultaneously. So obviously I can't play the chord note because I'm holding the guitar. That's what it's going to sound like if you're playing a chord or picking the E chord without the E being in place. Okay, up next is G sharp 7. Now it's a very quick change to fret number 4. You'll notice my thumb that was at the top here now disappears behind the neck. You can see the thumb's position has changed and this secures my first finger nice and straight for those that are new to our chords. Your root note or the bass note for G sharp 7 is also on the 6th string. So your picking for this is also going to go 6, 5, 6, 5. Simple as that. Now, the rest of the fingers just on G sharp 7, if you're not sure of the shape. In fret 4 with the first finger, middle finger, fret 5, third string from the bottom, ring finger, string 5 onto the 6th fret, G sharp 7. After that chord, C sharp 7, which is like that. You'll notice your middle finger loses or gets removed. And staying in the 4th fret, and then finger 3, your ring fingers on the fourth string, pinky on the second string, both in fret six. Now because the root note is on the fifth string, you're going to start on the fifth and you can see the picking hand now is actually reversed. That's so five, six, five, six. So you can actually see the swap around or the change around from the G7. G sharp seven goes six, five, six, five, C sharp 7 goes 5, 6. So what we're learning from this is when your root note, like for example G sharp 7 or the E chord, when your root note is on the 6th string, you're going to go for this technique 6, 5, 6, 5. But if your root note is on the 5th string, like the C sharp 7 and later the B7, which we'll get to at the end of the verse, then you're going to reverse it and it will go five six five six that's your turnaround or swap around i think turnaround is actually a blues phrase so we're talking about thumb techniques you're just switching the picking pattern root on six six five root on fifth five six remember that after the c sharp seven you now jump to the f sharp seven root on the sixth and you can see on your pdf file as well i've highlighted where the bass note is 
So that will be also 6, 5, 6, 5. So before we go to the A and the A minor, let's take those four chords together with me. We'll take it through slowly. Make sure your bass notes on the correct strings. Watch the thumb as well as it disappears from the E to the G sharp 7. And here we go, slow motion. 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and Now the reason why I wanted to stop there is because when we go to the A, which is fret number 5, you see the fingers in place, you can reference the diagram, and it changes to A minor, you simply lose that middle finger. So you can hear the transition now. 1 and 2 and, sorry that should have been 6, 5. You can hear the change. Major, minor, it's this note that's changing it. Major, minor. So we're going to go 6, 5, 6, 5 and you're counting it 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and so in this time, the A and the A minor share a bar. So you're changing on the third beat. The same then will be said for the E to C sharp 7. Nice quick change. So if you're looking at in a car, in a plane, we can muffin every day. Love these words, they're so cool. Uh, we're going to go A, A minor, E, C sharp. Nice quick changes and watch your root notes with that thumb. That's the goal for this over here. And then after that, the last line is just normal F sharp 7. Remember, why we say normal is because it's a normal full bar. So four counts for the F sharp 7 and four counts for the B7 as well. Root now on the fifth string, so it's 5, 6. So if we were to summarize this, when your root notes on the sixth string, it's 6, 5. When your root notes on the fifth string, it's five, six. All of the chords, excepting lines four and five, are going to be a full bar, one and two and three and four. But the in a car on a plane shares a bar, one and two and three and four and E, two and three and four and those are your sneaky parts and everything else, full bar. Finish off. Let's take you and I together the whole way through slow motion. Two and three and four and and then try and boil it to speed, so you end up something like this. And it sounds pretty cool. And yes, I did make a mistake with it. One, five, and six turn around. You got the idea? Is it a lovely song to play? Let me know how it goes. And then in the second video that I'll prepare later, I'm going to introduce you to the E major scale, which is going to sound like this. And we're going to see how you can sort of join the chords together. But for now, first get those chords working well. If you have any questions, if you want more information about bar chords specifically, let me know, otherwise have an awesome week and enjoy the muffin song. <laughs>